So, Sutul Al Imran starts with the same way as I already mentioned as Sutul Bakra mentioned, that it starts. And one thing that is important about the Quran, which is known to the scholars, but less known to the public, and that is that the Quran contains the Torah, the Ayat of Torah. The Quran contains the Ayat of Injil. The Quran contains the Ayat of Zubur. And this is what it means in Ayat number 2 of Al Imran, where, where it says, and now this Quran becomes a criteria of what is. Uh, I'll explain for fun, uh, inshallah, later. Okay, this is more complicated. Anyway, what is interesting is so the Al Imran can be divided into two, two parts. In one part, it is talking to the Christians, it is also talking to the Jews. In Surah Al-Baqarah, it is also talking to the Christians, but the dominant co conversation is with the Jews, and then as, uh, as some, because they have the same book. So the assumption is, if you're talking to the Jews, you're also, in a way, talking to the Christians. In the same way, the conversation is primarily to the Christians, but there are some points that also relate to the Jewish community. Now over here, that's something that is very important. Over there, it talks about the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, by this Qur'an, many can be led astray to. And by this Qur'an, many can be led to the correct way. And by the way, another very interesting point that I want to point out to you that's very important. The Jewish mind is always very historical. Like Jewish people think very historically. And so when you read Surah Al-Baqra, it's very historical. This happened, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened. The Christian mind is based upon parables. Everybody's heard of the parables of Jesus. So for example, in this surah it says, the example of Isa is like the example of Adam, right? So it, the tamthilat, the examples are given, examples are given to explain to the Christians because the Christian mind thinks by examples. And so Sultan Al Imran uses a historical approach, uh, sorry, Sultan Bakr uses a historical approach. So the Al Imran, this surah that we're using, is studying, uses the, uh, the, the parable approach that guide, by giving an example. If you ever heard Zach of Knight uh, a lot, you'll notice a lot of times he gives his, his answer by giving an example. Because he's gotten so much into it that he's actually adopted that way of thinking. You see? And so Christians are always thinking in terms of parables. And over here, like I mentioned in Surah in the beginning it says, Allah can lead many astray with this Qur'an. Because if you enter the Qur'an with the, uh, ill intentions, what will happen? You'll go astray. And the same thing that is mentioned here, Ayatul Muhkamat and Ayatul Mutashabihat. The problem that the Christians faced is that they got involved in Ayatul Mutashabihat. They got involved in the idea of what is the word of God. Isa is the word of God. What is the word of God? Oh, he is Ruham Minhu. This, you know, and they started giving tashbih to this, and then they started making a mountain out of something that didn't need to become a mountain, meaning they made Isa alayhi salatu a god out of that. So this is what's being, this is actually the introduction to the conversation about Christians. And then, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Minhu ayatun muhkabat. There are ayat that are clear. They're clear meaning there's no two meanings of them. And then there are other ayats like alif lam mim. What does it mean? Now if you start spending your life on what is alif lam mim, what is alif lam mim mean, then you know this is this becomes a problem of a heart as the Quran describes. Then over here now I want to start with the Al Quran like I said is divided into two conversations. One is the conversation with the Christians primarily. Then the second conversation is with the Muslims. But as Sultan Bakr gave Sharia and also said you have to struggle and you have to be ready for any any uh, any difficulty you incur on the way. The same thing is in Sultan Ali Quran. After talking to the conversation uh, conversation with the Christians, the rest of the whole of the Sultan Ali Quran is about struggle, 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 struggle. Be united. Don't let go of the Quran. And the Sultan Ali Quran quotes many of the same ayat, many of the same verses that are quoted in Surah Al-Baqarah, for example, and again, remember what I said about Surah Al-Baqarah. The problem that the people before had is the same problem that we had. Surely all problems will come to you that came to them, the Prophet said, like two shoes of a pair. The Prophet said, if they went into a lizard's hole, you would go into a lizard's hole. So over there in Surah Al-Baqarah it says, This was one of their problems. Oh, the fire is not going to touch us. We're Muslims. Why will the fire touch us? 
He just read this ayah of Surah Ali Imran too. لَن تَمَسَّنَ النَّارِ إِلَّا أَيَّامَ مَعْدُودَاتِ The fire will not touch us except for a few days. So the Christians, uh, the Christians and the Jews, they also adopted these same ideas that we have. We believe, oh, we're Muslim, we're going to go to Jannah, the fire is not going to touch us, except for a few days. So a lot of these similarities are similar ayat, similar topics are mentioned in both the surahs. Now coming to the Christians, how much time do I have? You have time. You have eight minutes. Okay, let me know when there's four minutes, then I'll go to the second part. Okay. As far as the Christianity is concerned, the first story it begins okay. with is the story of the mother of Maryam. But I'll skip this, and then after that, the second story is the story of Yahya. You know, Zachariah was an old man, and his mother was an old man, and she was barren. She couldn't bear children. So even before, and what Allah is trying to say here, here's an example. Yahya was born in a miraculous way, just like Isa was born in a miraculous way, just before. You know, Yahya is six months older than uh, then Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. So uh, then over here, the example is given that, look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a miraculous birth to Zakariyah. And then after that, he gave a miraculous birth to Maryam. So you don't claim that Yahya is God. You don't make Yahya into a God, even though he had a miraculous birth. The same way is about Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Yes, over there, it's even more miraculous, but miraculous is nonetheless miraculous. The father couldn't have children, he was too old. The mother was barren, she never had children. Yet he still had children. Yet he, uh, Zakaria had his son, Yahya. And then after that is the story of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Now, all of this, uh, by the way, this uh, the, part of this surah is that there was a group of people from Najran, which was a Christian group of people that had come to the Prophet sallallahu And this was part of a khutbah that he had given to them. Meaning these are ayat that he had read to them. And then, uh, the other thing is, the other point that the Qur'an makes here is this. فَلَمَّا حَسَّ عِيسَى مِنْهُمُ الْكُفْرَ When Isa والسلام, felt their kufr, which is that they're going to kill him. Now, if Isa, if the whole, you know, Christianity is based upon what? The sitting on the cross, right? Then why does the, why did Isa والسلام, say, مَنْ أَنْصَارِ إِلَى اللَّهِ Who will help me in the cause of Allah? The Bible says, it's in the Bible. It, Jesus commands his disciples to pick up the sword. He, dis, he commands his disciples to pick up the sword. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here that if the whole purpose was to be on the cross, then why did he in the Bible, in your own books, he reject? Not only that, there's a prayer of Isa alayhi that most Muslim scholars don't believe that he actually said this, but he said, let this cup pass for me. Meaning, let this destiny of being on the cross pass for me, or let me not go away in this way that they want me to go away by being killed. This dua of Isa alayhi is also in the Bible. The point I'm trying to make is, <coughs> if the whole purpose was, he will die on the cross and your sins will be forgiven, and that's the sacrifice that you say is the ultimate sacrifice, why did he say to his disciples, man ansari ila Allah, pick up the sword and defend me? Why did he do that, if that was the purpose? Now, after this it says, تَعَالَوْا إِلَىٰ كَلِمَةٍ سَوَاءَ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ Come to a common term between us and you. What is that? أَلَّا نَعْبُدُ إِلَّا اللَّهِ That we will worship no one but Allah. We're going to worship one Allah. Okay? And the same attitude is taken here that don't hide the book. And I'll give you one example of that before I go into the second part of the Quran, which has to do with the Muslims. For example, in this, and remember, I'm only giving one example of like probably hundred. One of the ayat, um, uh, one of the ayat that has to do with this issue is the uh, is the ayat that talks about Bakka. Bakka uh, what does it say? Bakka din mukarrama? Bakka din mubarakatin. Bakka is Makka, okay? But the Quran uses the word Bakka. Why? Because the word Bakka is used in the Bible. The word Bakka is used in the Bible and it says, Blessed are those whose strength is in you, meaning Allah. Who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. Where do you go for pilgrimage? To Mecca. This, I'm reading the Bible. Who have set their hearts on pilgrimage as they pass through the valley of Bakka. Bakka in Arabic means to cry. Baku, Bakka. Bakka means to cry. The valley where you cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? The, pass through the valley of Bakka. They make it a place of springs. What? What's the spring there? The Zamzam, right? Uh, and it goes on and on. 
But the point is that Allah is saying the word not Makkah but Bakkah to the Christians again to tell them this is in your Bible. This is in your Bible. And this is only one of many examples that I'm giving of this type. So after this first portion is covered where da'wah is given, uh, also the Muslims are told, look, you know, you have to be careful. Don't be, don't become too, uh, too honest, not honest, but too, uh, when somebody smooth talks to you and tricks you. Don't become tricked. Right? Yes, you have similarities with Ahlul Kitab, but don't be on guard though. Be on guard. Also, the other thing that I wanted to mention is, the first half before the uh, Christianity is mentioned, the Battle of Badr is mentioned in the beginning. Look, you won Badr. And in the end, Uhud is mentioned, you lost Uhud. Why? This will come towards the second part, but I just want to point out, Badr in the beginning, Uhud in the end. Okay? Conversation with the Christians in the beginning, conversations with the Muslims in the end. Now how much time do I have? Two minutes. Two minutes? Yeah. Okay. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to the Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Don't die except you've surrendered to Allah. Then, وَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold on to the Book of Allah and do not be uh, divided into groups. وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ you were divided into tribal, you know, wars and everything. Allah combined your heart. And then Allah says, You become an, an ummah, a group that calls towards good. You're the best people taken out from mankind. Then, so this continues. Ohad we lost, why? Ohad we lost because of the Munafiqeen. 300, 900, uh, 1,100 people were supposed to go. 300 of the Munafiqeen stayed behind. Oh, if you're not going to defend the city of Medina and you're not going to fight in Medina and you're going to go out, we're not going with you. So 300 people were convinced to stay behind. Then when they were in Uhud, they disobeyed the command of the local Amir that was sitting on the mountain. When you disobeyed the command, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you lose. And then Allah said, this is okay. You know, you have had some hurt, qarhun, and you have had some difficulty, and they had some difficulty too, so this is okay. The last ten ayat of Sultan Al Imran are like the last two ayat of Sultan Baqarah in terms of the Prophet really loved these ayat, the last ten. And uh, it's a dua, you can pick it up and read it yourself. It's a dua, and it basically says, Look, you will be successful, and don't think that they have all the power. And just it says, it says over there, Ulaika humul muflihun in Sultan Baqarah in the beginning. And then, فَنْسُلْنَا عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ At the end of Sultan Baqarah, over here is يَا أَيُّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا سْبِهُ وَالصَّابِرُوا وَالْرَابِتُوا وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So Idr Falah is also mentioned here. So that you will be successful. You will be successful. But Allah is going to make you successful when you go through these trials and you pass through them. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا أَسْتَقْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْأَسْتَقْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْأَسْتَقْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْأَس